This conference will now be recorded. Perfect. Okay, Council, good to see you all this evening. And um, we've received regrets from uh, Councillor Drago Stefanik today, so just to acknowledge that he is not here. And if I can get a mover and a seconder, please to open the meeting. Belinda and Peter. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Peter Kistemaker, be it resolved that we do call this regular meeting of council to order on Wednesday, December 9th, 2020 at 6.02 p.m. Those in favor? And that is carried. And if I can get a mover and a seconder to accept the agenda, please. John and Belinda. And that's moved by John Peroff, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that council does hereby approve the agenda as presented. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, as always, council, you can uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof and a declaration of conflict of interest. You can state that now or any time that it arises through the meeting. And there being none right now, I will continue. We have item number five, the adoption of our regular meeting held on Wednesday, November 18th. If I can get a mover and a seconder for the minutes, please. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on Wednesday, November 18th, 2020 as distributed. And those in favor? And that is carried. I'm moving on to 5.2, the adoption of our special meeting minutes. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda and John. And that was moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the special meeting of council held on Wednesday, November 25th, 2020, as distributed. And those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, six, item six, business arising from the minutes. There is none. Um, we'll continue on to seven. So we have a deputation tonight, and I'd like to welcome Horn Payne First Nation to our council meeting. And uh, I'll open the floor to Chief Kosas. Welcome, Chief. Is anyone else presenting with you tonight? Yeah, I believe we have uh, Councillor Isabel and uh, Lisa. They're also observing. Okay, maybe great. Some words from Councillor Isabel. Okay, well, welcome to our meeting as well, Councillor Isabel, and for uh, Lisa as well. Thank you for being here, and I'll give you the floor, Chief Kosas. Yeah, I guess the, we, we put our deputation, and again, thank you for uh, having us at your uh, meeting here. So we had submitted a deputation, uh, which is, we have four items for discussion. I believe you have the letter, it's dated November 30th. Yes, we do, and it was distributed yeah. with our packages as well. Yeah. Yeah. So number number one is we put in the uh, bid amount for the eight lots on Spruce Street. So uh, if there's any questions surrounding our bid or what we intend to do with those uh, eight lots. Okay, I'll open up the floor to council right now about that. Is there any questions from council on item number one? Yes, go ahead, Councillor Kistemaker, Peter. Hi, I was just wondering, uh, Chief, if uh, yep. how you come up with the number of uh, the amount, one hundred dollars per lot. How did you? How how was the? What was the uh, theme behind it, or how did you come up with that number? We obviously we were looking to get you know, get the kind of a land donation toward this project, and I was going to put a number of one dollar on it, but this a two hundred dollar figure on per bid. 
uh, versus a dollar. Okay, thanks. And, and part of that too is that the the lots will be recognized based on their assessed value for our project. So the if the if the bid is accepted one hundred dollars per uh, lot for those eight lots as per the uh, uh, purchase of municipal surplus lands, we would then recognize the the assessed values on our budget uh, less than one hundred dollars we've paid. And we would consider the remaining balance as a uh, contribution of the township because there's still a value uh, for those lots. So we would recognize that in our uh, CMHE application. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Any other questions on item number one? I'm gonna ask Belinda, I seen your uh, mic unmuted earlier. Belinda, did you have a question? Councillor Kitzmaker? I had the same question. I was wondering where that hundred dollars came from. Okay, thank great. Okay, thank you. And uh, John, Councillor Peroff. I'm sorry. Uh, item number one. Can you? Uh, which are you looking at? The first letter. Ah uh, yes, uh, we received the letter with the package of November 30th, 2020, for the deputation request, and there's four discussion items on there. Um, don't think I'm looking at the letter. Okay, November well, let's 30th, make sure sorry. everyone's on the same page here. So, under your agenda package, uh, I believe it's the second, the second, um, the second button. You have Gail's report first, and then you have um, the letter. Do you find it? Do you, have you found it, Councillor Perrault? Yes, I, I did. Okay, find great. It. Okay, great. Can I just ask a general question for clarification of for my notes, though? Sure. Um, when we met back the other day, it was, is this project for everybody or is the affordable housing for First Nations members only? It's targeted for the in Indigenous uh, people. So uh, if there is any other Indigenous uh, individuals within the Horn Painted area, we would consider them as, as a potential uh, tenant. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question, Councillor Peroff. Okay, um, any other further questions or comments on item number one? I just have one, uh, Chief Kosas, is the um, amount value of the houses, do you have um, any figures on what you figure the assessment value of those houses will be once completed and up? Are you referring to, to the construction costs? Uh, no, not the construction costs. Um, we do our tax um, our tax mill rate by value assessment value of a home. Right. Um, and I was just wondering if there was any discussion or thought on that, on what that value would be for the eight houses. Uh, no, we haven't actually went out to, uh, I believe that would be an issue with the deal with MPAC. Correct. We have to establish Correct. that. So that's something that's uh, outside our uh, area of responsibility. Okay, and can you remind me what the value of the homes, the construction costs were? Right now, we've got a couple of bids coming in. We're approximately about 200,000 uh, plus per home. So with the overall costs, uh, lot preparation, so forth, we could be pushing around uh, 250 to $300,000 per Okay. okay, thank you for that. Any further questions on item number one? Okay, we'll move on. Number two? So number two, as part of the project again, we were uh, discussing in previous discussions, is uh, looking to get the building permit fees waived for the, uh, this uh, CMHC affordable housing project. Okay, any questions on that from council? Uh, go ahead, Councillor Peroff, John. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was just wondering if uh, the building permit fees were, were there, what is the approximate value of that? Do you, did you look that up? 
I didn't personally uh, get the value of the permit fees. Okay, thank you. I think I can refer that probably to our staff. My understanding it's always a percentage of the build. Uh, Gail, uh, do you have any comments? Actually, it's not it's not set up that way at the moment, oh, a percentage sorry. of the build, but um, there's uh, prices per square footage for construction costs. And uh, I can't remember off the top of my head if it's, uh, there are different things, different values for different builds. Some are nine cents per square foot, some are 14 cents per square foot. So it just depends on where those particular uh, items would fall. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, my question on item number two, would this be included then in the application process too as an in-kind donation from the township? Would that help the, pro the application? Yes, it would, because we would again identify the, the true value of a permit, uh, building permit fee, and we would also then put in the other line item that we've received a concession or in-kind from the township. So yes, it would. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, any other further questions on uh, item number two for discussion? Okay, moving on to uh, item number three. Number three, we, we're also looking to get waiving of the landfill tipping fees for the uh, demolition of the uh, derelict uh, buildings that are situated on these lots. I believe we have four of that or four buildings on the four lots 17 19 20 or 21 23 spruce street so any costs that are associated in regards to the tipping fees i believe i understand they're about approximately two thousand dollars per house so that would bring us about an eight thousand dollar value okay and again the same question as previous that would be able to be included in the application and used as part of the leverage Correct. Uh, that would be again a showing a, a concession or in kind from the township, okay. and then obviously boosting. I guess showing the the township's uh, support of the program. How about the program of the of the project? Okay, and uh, I'm going to open up questions of council for item number three. <clears throat> Okay, I just have one question just to clarify. So you are suggesting that the Horn Payne First Nation would actually take down the buildings and cover That's all correct. those costs? That's correct. At okay. this point, yes. yes, okay. And I and this is, has a very short timeline with the start of like they want the houses up basically by next year, correct? Uh, within twelve months of approval. Twelve months of so approval, okay. Correct. So that would put us uh, pretty much uh, at the end of uh, 2021. Okay. Yeah. And taking the houses down on your own, that would be able to fit within your timelines? Correct. Uh, the And removing all those houses, because the, our application is due December 31st, uh, 2020 here. And uh, if we're successful, we would get an approval by end of January, uh, beginning of February. And the money would act, would start flowing shortly thereafter because they want to have the money dispersed by March 31st, uh, 2021. So from that, if we got to re receive approval, we would also take immediate steps to arrange to have these houses removed from the properties. And also, since part of the project, we have these modular housing, then these houses would be, construction would commence as soon as we get them to the queue with the modular builder. And then spring, uh, plan to uh, remove the houses in the spring, put in the basements. As we're uh, doing that part of the construction, the houses would, would be being built, and we would hope to have houses being brought into the township probably June or July of uh, 2021, and occupied by, uh, I would say, mid to late summer, uh, providing the modular builder can, can bring them in. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Any other further questions on item number three for discussion? Okay, we'll move on to item number four then. Okay, number four. I just want to jump back to number two. And sure. If it's, if it's approximately, say, 14 cents a square foot, uh, whatever it may be, the houses are going to be roughly around 1,000 plus. 
So we're looking about $150 potential cost for those permits, just so we can put a value to that. Obviously yet to be finalized. So with the uh, with the eight, and that would give us the uh, three, well, a $500 value for number, for, number, for item two. Then we have $8,000 value for item three. Okay, thank you for that. So item four, obviously under, I can appreciate the townships going through their uh, development process for the community improvement plan that gives the uh, grants authority to the township to provide any concessions toward what we're asking for today. And we talked in the past, uh, I think you guys are mentioning by mid or June of 2021, this plan hopefully would be, be in place. So we were looking to get a uh, any concessions that would have been available under the community improvement plan, obviously we can, uh, on this particular project, access those once the plan is in place. At this point here, not knowing how the plan is going to be uh, developed or what the criteria are going to be, uh, we would like to have the ability to, uh, to have any concessions considered, let's say approximately June uh, 2021 for this project. Okay, just uh, just for clarification, we're looking at um, our official plan and our zoning bylaw to be done in the next year, and then we have to wait for that to be done to do our community improvement plan. So I'm gonna, I just would like to clarify on the timeline for the CIP to be finished. Either Gail, I'll forward to you. So I, I don't think it's going to be June. Um, we're looking at probably. Um, having our public consultation we're trying to arrange our public consultation um, and uh, presentation to council of the draft official plan by june but that only will happen if the ministry of municipal affairs can uh, respond to us by then um, and often that takes six months we just we just actually had a meeting the other day with our consultant um, and just with COVID, i think things are a bit behind so if that happens, then it still has to go to the province for approval after that. So um, that's likely not going to be done till I'm going to say September, October. We hope it could be done sooner, but not entirely sure. And as far as the community improvement plan, uh, we don't have to be completely done the official plan before we start that process, but we certainly have to have a draft in place so that we can work off of that draft. So uh, it, it won't be completed in, in June of 21, but we'll hope to have started it for sure by then. Okay, okay, thank you for that clarification, Gail. I just wanted uh, for the benefit of everyone listening. And um, I'm gonna open up the floor to council for questions for item number four for the chief. Okay, there's none. So just to reiterate that then, so anything what you're looking for is basically in the plan that this project be grandfathered in and any kind of concessions or, or benefits that could be had if, this pro if the plan had been in place when the project was done, that the Horn Payne First Nation could benefit from those, correct? That's correct. Is to, uh, again, uh, if the plan was in place and to uh, be able to access those uh, once the plan is in place or whenever when it's appropriate when okay. nice in, uh, yeah yep okay thank you for that i guess one of the reasons we we kind of are looking toward that also because also we're going to be incurring some you know, additional costs in removing these houses uh, from these lots and our thought process is to have the offset of those costs against these tax uh, concessions so hopefully you know mathematically we can balance it out uh, down the road Okay, sorry, could you repeat that for me? Because we have the, when we go to the removal, if, if the project is approved and we incur additional costs that are going to, to remove those four uh, buildings from those four lots on lot 17, 19, 21, 23 Spruce Street, uh, our thoughts was that when we incur those costs, we're going to be able to offset them through uh, tax concessions. But since the community improvement plan is not in today, we cannot offset it. So that's mm -hmm. why our hope is to have that this this project grandfathered under uh, consideration when the plan is in place or when it's appropriate uh, these concessions can be made 
Okay, okay, oh, thank you for that. Okay, I think, uh, is there any further, just before we wrap up the deputation, is there any further questions from council? At this time, no? Oh, Belinda, go ahead, Councillor Kistemaker. Um, like this is a, a um, this grant that's come out, it's like a community partnership type thing. Do you have any other partners that are involved in your project besides looking at the township of Hornpain? Uh, you, you're talking about this current uh, rapid housing initiative? Yes. Yeah, Hornpain First Nation is, is the applicant and is going to be the, uh, the only applicant. The and, only applicant. And the, right. Okay. Uh, and then obviously uh, the township is going to play a role in regards to providing some concessions toward uh, these costs that we had talked about in item, uh, uh, actually all the items, one to four. Okay. I was just wondering if there was other partners that you had in the background or something, if something, if we weren't to help you in one area, if there was other partners involved that could. Uh, no, uh, no, okay. strictly it's, been, it's a Hornpain First Nation project. Uh, so I guess the uh, answer is no. Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you for that. I have one further uh, question just on the whole um, project in itself. If council was to decide that this was something that they wanted to pursue and move forward with, would um, a letter from town council highlighting the different points in the truth and reconciliation report where municipalities are highlighted, would that help the application? Um, I don't know if it would help it per se because uh, we've uh, or look they have this what they call the criteria uh, the scoring grid. Uh, I think in a case it couldn't hurt. Uh, would it help? I couldn't say if it would or not. I think the uh, concessions that the township uh, provides toward the like the building permit fees, the, uh, the tipping fees for the uh, for the. Uh, the demolition of the, of the buildings, uh, the lots at $100, those values I think would be reflective of uh, the township supporting the project on the monetary side of things. Uh, I guess a letter wouldn't hurt. Or it. Okay, yeah, I guess I should have rephrased my question. I did kind of put you in a spot there about helping it. Is would you would that be something that you would see beneficial for your application? At this point, I don't have the list in front of me. I guess it wouldn't hurt. Uh, where would we slide it into the application process? At this point, uh, I couldn't say where we would slide it in, where it would be a given weight, I guess you, you would say. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna thank you, uh, Chief Kosas, and um, I'll give the floor. I think you had said Councillor Isabel wanted to speak. If she, if she if she had any any thoughts. Okay, I just don't want to close the deputation if uh, right. she does have any thoughts. Any words, Councillor? Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, thank everybody uh, for um, hearing us out this evening. And um, the needs assessment is going well. Um, in the community and I'm happy to uh, like you know to help people out so the needs assessment is is going great so thank you okay that's good to hear and just one further uh, note on that too we do have the housing needs and demand study that's available right. that the township completed so there's do there's yeah. uh, information in there that could help yeah, we actually, uh, Gail had provided us a copy of that report and it was uh, greatly appreciative. We Perfect. have actually gone through, the, we have gone through that report and we're also, we're going to obviously take snippets out of that report in our application to the CMHC. So it was a, a valuable report for us. Okay, great. Well, thank you for being here, Councillor Isabel and for Lisa Stewart and Chief Kosas. I thank you for the deputation. Um, the, the Town Council has set aside uh, discussion in our closed session and right. we will continue this conversation in open discussion after that closed session later in this the meeting tonight and um do you have any further questions or comments you'd like to say before i close i uh, know for hornpain first nation uh no i just think it's going to be a really positive project for the hornpain first nation community 
and likewise uh, uh, the township of uh, Horn Payne. Okay, well, thank you for being here tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay, council will continue on and this uh, conversation will continue on our closed session. And we are moving on to 7.2. If I can get a mover and a seconder for the tender award, please. Belinda and John. Okay, moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Where is the Council of the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain, issued a request for quotations for garbage pickup and landfill transfer station operations for the Township of Hornpain? And where has the Township of Hornpain received one proposal submission from the following contractor in the following amount, all prices excluding HST? Horn Paint Service Centre Incorporated at a bi-weekly rate of $2,300 and whereas the Public Works Manager and the CAO Clerk have reviewed the submission and feel the terms are reasonable and are hereby recommending that Council accept said proposal. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does hereby accept the staff recommendation and award the tender for garbage pickup and landfill transfer station operations to Hornpain Service Centre as indicated above. Any discussion on the motion, Council? Go ahead, Councillor Kistemaker. Peter? How does this compare to the last contract, uh, Madam Mayor? Right. Um, I can start to speak to this, but I can hand it off to Gail because she'll give more of a complete. Um, I'll just hand it off to you, Gail. Thank you. So uh, the first thing is uh, it amounts to about uh, nine, I'd say about nine thousand dollars more per year. Uh, the other contract was nineteen fifty biweekly. This one's twenty three hundred biweekly. Um, but the I think the um, the RFP or the RFQ went out this time with uh, some more detail uh, and expectations, and I think those were clearly understood. So I think the um, not too many changes to the to the actual contract. I'm just going to pull it up here. Uh, just a second. I highlighted. Uh, I do believe I did um, track changes on the old one. If I'm not mistaken. I might be getting my bylaws mixed up. We have lots of bylaws. <laughs> um, so I added uh, to this contract, I added uh, definitions. There were no definitions in the last one, just to clarify. Uh, we added a map of the collection area. Um, there, It's the same collection area. There just was no map attached last time so that it's clear for everybody. Um, but there's not really, uh, I wouldn't say any, any uh, real difference in the operations um, at all. Um, it's still the same requirements, the same the same uh, requirements of the certificate of approval have to be followed, the same requirements for monitoring staffing and reporting of uh, volumes and calling in the, uh, the uh, metal, uh, metal and electronics and tire people to, to take those away. Uh, twice a year. Um, I don't really think there's anything too much too much different in it. Dwayne, did I miss anything? No, no, we didn't change any of that. Yeah, I think it just is a little bit with the definitions and the map. I just think it consolidates things a bit more. Just and just so that it's clear, uh, it's one pointed towards you, Dwayne. Just so the taxpayers know why I'm asking. Uh, Men that are currently being employed right now by the public service departments could not handle this, could they? Did you hear the question, Duane? That the current staffing at the public works department couldn't handle the uh, taking care of the transfer site? Currently, we cannot. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Gail. And then Just I'll go to John. To yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, we just put a request for proposals out for a um, consultant to do a, a long-term waste management plan um, for the landfill operations, complete landfill operations, because 
our landfill site is is coming to uh, an end in the next four or five years it'll be full so we either have to find a place to uh, have a new site or to expand the current site and that's not for us to decide you have to get an engineer to do a study and they will be the ones to recommend that but at the same time in that um, <clears throat> excuse me in that uh, request for proposals we are asking people to do a full analysis on the operations of the transfer site how it could be done better if it needs to stay open how much it would cost to, to move uh, everything to the fire site um, as well as recycling options uh, that uh, may be available to us or, or lucrative to us even and also leaving room for possible uh, businesses whether it be a uh, a methane gas, something to do with methane gas that's produced by the garbage, or uh, something to do with biomass, or um, any kind of uh, investment that might be made uh, to help us with our revenues, um, even to consider a regional landfill site. So it's pretty comprehensive, the study that's going to be done. Um, I, I don't know how quickly it can be done, but um, th th this will include, by the time this contract's over, hopefully we'll have a direction uh, or at least some options that council can choose uh, what's best for the community. So I think uh, for now, this is the best way of doing it before we really know what, if, if we're even gonna be staying at the site that we have right now. Thank you for that, Gil. And I just, uh, further that, there has been quite a bit of work done with the Waste Management Committee, with meetings and it's a big hot topic and it has been researched and it was uh, the contract originally with the timelines it gives us time to investigate all of this as well so go ahead Councillor Peroff John yeah yes thank you mayor um, I just wanted to clarify I guess for uh, for the listeners here tonight um, is there an expectation for um, any delay in services uh, through this transition, I know it's going to happen right at. Uh, sorry about this. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, no expected delays. Like it's right after Christmas, right? So I don't want. I want to ensure that people there's no disruption. We're not. We're not expecting any delays. No. Thank you. Okay, so it should. It should be a seamless transition. Okay. Okay, so any other further discussion on the motion at hand? Okay, council, there being none, I'm going to put it to the vote. Those in favor? Okay, and that is carried, none opposed. And just at this time, I do want to say a thank you to Chefies um, for all the years that he did take care of our landfill and i wish him all the best in the future with all his future endeavors and it has been a pleasure to be in work with him at the township and i can't say enough that uh for thank you and i um wanted to state that now okay and we'll move on Petitions, there's none. Eight, nine, disbursements, none. And now we're on to manager's reports. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the manager's reports provided at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. And we have our first report as our CAO report. Gail, do you want to speak to your report before I open up for questions or comment from Council? Just a couple of things um, that we've had. Um, I, I, these reports are done sort of a week ahead of time. So I just want to provide a bit of an update um, on a couple of things. Um, we tentatively had scheduled and may still schedule a, a special meeting. Um, there's a resolution farther on in the meeting, in this meeting, to schedule a, a meeting for uh, the uh, North Superior Broadband, Regional Broadband Network to do a presentation to council uh, for them to make a decision on whether uh, they want the community to stay within the program or not. 
and we were thinking February 3rd, but then we were rethinking that and thinking maybe it would be better to have that earlier in January, uh, possibly the 11th, uh, and that is because they kind of need all their commitments from their communities um, before the end of March, so that will give Council an extra month to sort of deliberate or get more information if they want. Um, in saying that, though, um, we also have been, uh, we had our public consultation for the Municipal Services Corporation on Monday night, and uh, consequent, consequently, we've had a, a conversation about what the next steps are to move forward with that. So, um, uh, Stacy and I will be collecting information over the next uh, five or six weeks, and we're thinking that February the 3rd, the original date of, of uh, a special meeting, may be a good time for us to uh, present you with some information so you can start thinking about, um, you know, policy, board, makeup, all that type of stuff. And in, in, in the meantime, we're going to meet um, with uh, the chair of the HEDC and kind of gather some more information. So just a couple of things to think about there. Um, and I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head at the moment, so I will take questions if there are any. Okay, thank you for that, Gil. I'll open the floor up to Council for questions for the CAO. Go ahead, Councillor Peroff, John. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Gail. I just wanted your, uh, I'm not really involved in the North Superior Regional Broadband Network. Um, I hear the reports from you guys, but um, one of the things I was wondering is they're coming out with a, that new Starlink free internet uh, for everybody. And I'm wondering why we chose to go this route rather than that route. Well, I don't know if I'm the best one to answer that, but I think I think the two, from what I understand, the two can can support each other. Uh, the Nash, the uh, North Superior Regional Broadband uh, Group will be forming a, a corporation um, out of these, however many communities they have in, involved, and will be owning their own uh, broadband. And the idea is to sell it to the communities that are involved in, and maybe elsewhere, I'm not really sure. Um, so that's why when Phnom asked for that letter of or resolution of support for Starlink, we had altered the wording a little bit from uh, what they had provided us um, to try and meld the two together somehow. Uh, I am certainly not a techie person and I don't, I really, I, I don't understand the way any, any of that works, but um, from what we were told by um, Amadeo Bernardi, who's been working with the regional broadband group, these two things could work together. So it doesn't really give you a, a firm answer, but that was the answer that I was given. And Stacey, I don't know if you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, have anything that you could add to that? Um, I don't think I can add too much. I know that they've looked into, they definitely looked into it, um, all aspects of the project. And we have actually a backer for the whole project, uh, Crown Corporation. So I think that question specifics when it comes to technical stuff, John, I think it would be a great question to ask at the special meeting of uh, Amadeo. He would be able to really help you out on that. But for Gail and I, uh, yeah. the tech. <laughs> what, I, what is, thank you very much for your response, ladies. Uh, what I was really trying to get at, I think in the long run was, um, to make sure everybody that's watching out there is listening and is understanding why we're doing this and not going with a different in a different direction. So maybe at some point um, we can have a presentation or something to fill everybody in. Yes, that's what we're deciding right now about uh, yes. possibly having a meeting for January 11th. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Thank you John. Any other further questions from Council to Gail about other aspects of the report? Just um, as you're looking at your agendas right now, if you can uh, possibly look at January the 11th and February the 3rd as possible meeting dates, special meeting dates. In discussions with Gail, we are going to try and keep these short. So the one for the 11th would be um, 
the broadband presentation and possibly further discussions that come from this meeting that we can put into that uh, first special meeting. And then the one on the third would be all for the MSC, just for that project alone. I think it would be good to just focus on that and have the extra time to discuss that. Correct. So just um, so I'll let I'll leave that with you, and we can we don't have that resolution coming up yet. But if you have a good idea when your availability is, and I would like you also to take notice on Gail's report of page two of the recommendations coming from our, to our January meeting about our special meeting set for budget consultation and final review of the budget and the timelines, if you've noticed it in there. Go ahead, Gail, sorry, I didn't see your hand. That's okay, I just, uh, looking at the last line of my report, I just wanted to remind everybody, um, the staff in the, you know, the fire department and um, council, um, just to remember, please, please attend the virtual Christmas party on December 19th. It'll be about an hour and a half long, and it's a, it's a, a facilitated um, trivia um, night. So I think it'll be fun. They seem like a really good, uh, energetic company. So I think it'll be fun. Game on. What's yeah? I was like, what's the trivia about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't tell you. <laughs> Like, I, like, I don't oh, even know. I want to come prepared. <laughs> I, I didn't. Uh, oh no, that's not fair. No, I didn't uh, actually do the setup, so I'm not. I'm not sure which one is picked, but uh, yeah, you just have to polish up on everything. Okay. Yeah, because we have time for that. <laughs> okay. So there's no further questions for Gail. Well, thank you, Gail, for your report and all your hard work. There's uh, just by the magnitude of the report, we see how much is getting done and how much uh, the staff and, and yourself are working at moving our community forward. So thank you for that. And I, I have to say it right now, I wasn't gonna say it, but happy belated birthday, Gail. <laughs> thank you, I think. As, as they keep coming, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It's just another yeah. day. <laughs> it's like, thank can we you. forget this? <laughs> Okay, we'll move on now to our public manager's report. So I open the floor up. Dwayne, do you have any questions or com or questions? Any comments you would like to put about your report? <laughs> just an update. The snow bucket should be finished, completed, being built as of Friday this week. It should be shipped out as soon as it's done. Uh, the arena ice, we've started putting that in already. Uh, we're about three layers of ice in there now. And uh, the trim, the lights of the tree and pavilion have been lit up as of last weekend. Thanks to Cheryl. Ah, thank you. That I have to say, it was a bit lonely there at the pavilion and the tree lighting, just with the three of us. It was um, you could feel the missing presence of all the community and the bonfire and the fire department and all the like. It you just you could you it felt empty. It really did, and it, it looks beautiful. And thank you to all the staff and everyone for their hard work in getting that lit up. And the new lights look great. So, but uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so I'll open the floor for Dwayne's uh, report. So I'm glad, I'm excited to see that snow bucket in town when that gets here. Any questions for Dwayne, Council? Go ahead, Councillor Paroff, John. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dwayne, um, you bought a shovel, ex an excavator. Has it come to town yet, or when do you expect it? It uh, should be shipped out shortly back to us. Uh, you're just waiting final payment to, to ship it, so it should be any time. Thank you. That's uh, great. Hey, thank you, Councillor Paroff. Any other questions for our Public Works Manager? Okay, I just had a couple of uh, comments. 
just for the request for service from a local citizen for the lowering of speeds, I understand that we have to go through the MTO for this. I'm wondering if we can put extra signage up of something like children at play or community or like some of the signs that were created, especially for the COVID time. Um, I have to congratulate staff on doing such a good job on those. I was wondering if, if that's something we can look at in the meantime, just to slow people down in that area. Could we do that, Dwayne? Yeah, yes, we could. We already do have some children at play signs, but we could add more or bigger ones or something. Yeah. Just just while in while in this process of waiting or when we are like it, it may be a quite a while, but we do want to recognize that there is an issue there that needs to be addressed, maybe that would help. What do you think, Council? Go ahead, right. Melinda. Bright orange. <laughs> Bright orange. <laughs> That's what people hands. see. <laughs> okay, the other question I had for you, Duane, was um, the brushing of Becker Road that was completed by Hornpane Lumber, is that something part of their agreement with they use in our agreement? I, I was just, uh, and have they done this for us before? It was the initiative taken on by them entirely. It's no cost to us. They did the work. We just asked for our permission to do it. Oh, okay. And we've okay. I'll I'll be sure to thank Frank. And that was all my questions. Go ahead, Belinda. Sorry, I had my head down. I just wanted to say that it, uh, it's, it, it makes an improvement already. So it's very noticeable. Right on. Perfect. Good. Okay. That was all my comments. Any other further comments for Duane or questions? No? Okay. We're going to move on. We have the Economic Development Officer's Report. Uh, Stacy, would you like to speak to your report first, or I can open the floor to questions? Go ahead. Um, getting my report. Uh, I'll just take questions, see if, the, if the, anybody has any questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any questions from Council for our Economic Development Officer? I have the wrong report in front of me, Stacy, so I got to get to the right one. Well, don't. Ask me the wrong questions. <laughs> <laughs> Ask you the wrong questions. So I guess one thing is, as Gail said, our, we've had a meeting with our consultants from the OP, and we are hoping to have the draft of the background section of the report in this week or next week. So we would uh, we'd like to share that with council. You guys can have some holiday reading, so you can scan it and see where we are. Oh, perfect. Good. Do you do you um, know how long this report, this background report, is going to be? Well, Gail actually I asked, and I think they said about fifteen to twenty pages max. Oh, she was okay. Scared that it was about two hundred because we what? we uh, have a meeting scheduled on January sixth, so we're also reading it over the holidays. So we asked that question right off the bat. Okay, yeah, I guess we must work together a little bit too much now because that's exactly what I was saying. How long is this? How many pages? Divide it by three minutes? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, any other further questions for our Economic Development Officer? I don't see any, so thank you, Stacy. And we will move on to the Fire Chief Report. And I want to say I'm glad to see a, a report and uh, all the work that's being done there. Uh, go ahead, Gail. Just wanted to let you know that uh, Fire Chief's at work tonight, so you couldn't attend. Oh, okay, thank you for that. And I see the job ad went up for the secretary position for the fire department, so we're looking for... Yeah, we got a letter of resignation uh, 
today, I believe this morning. Um, so yeah, we're looking to uh, replace that position. So spread the word. Yes. Okay, is there any questions for the fire chief report? If you do, we can direct them to Gail and she can get you answers for that. Okay, there being none, we'll move on. Okay, I had read the motion was moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the manager's reports provided at the regular meeting of council held on Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. And those in favor of accepting the reports? And that is carried. None opposed. Okay, so we're moving on now to item 11, correspondence action items, and it's the Ho um, Hornpain Studio 6 Motel opportunity to participate. Gail, did you want to speak to this ahead of time? Um, I don't. I don't really think so. I think my report covers pretty much everything. Okay. Just sorry, just one comment about um, um, the uh, nuclear waste community well-being funds. Um, the reason I put that in there is because if the um, venture is going to go forward with regard to the hotel share, then the money is really that's the only place the money could come from, even if it's borrowed. Uh, and then also for uh, startup fees for the municipal service corporation. So I think that discussion is going to have to be had. Um, and maybe that's something we can do on the January 11th meeting um, in preparation to, or sorry, for the discussion on the municipal service corporation on February 3rd or whatever date it is that, that fits for council. Yes, that's, I think that's so, a good idea. Yeah, so I didn't put this on here for discussion. Uh, just to be clear, I didn't put that on there for discussion. It's not on the agenda, that particular topic, but I, mm -hmm. it's part of, it forms part of that. So just to be clear on that. So I'm gonna open up the floor for discussion on this topic about the opportunity to invest through the MSC in the hotel. Any uh, initial comments from council? Go ahead, John. Council Peroff? Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to uh, express my, I, I think this is a, a great idea to to investigate. I can't guarantee, but it's a good opp opportunity for the MSC anyways, I think. Um, this could be, this will be worthy of uh, a good discussion when it comes down to it. Okay, thank you for that, John. Any other, uh, go ahead, Councillor Kistemaker, Belinda. I really think we have to be careful on this and uh, look at all the options and uh, <clears throat> and uh, think about how to do it correct if we are involved and mm -hmm. um, not forget why we are want this uh, Municipal Service Corp and we want to make it work, so. It's okay. serious. Thank you for that. Any comments, Councillor Kistemaker, Peter? No? Okay. The comments I I thought about, and I I think it's, I'm with John and Belinda on both sides. I think we need to investigate it and look at it. And um, like Gail had said about putting funds away and having that discussion, I think that would be a really good fit with uh, looking at the, bra uh, the bar broadband presentation and then um, talking about how we are going to um, spend and allocate those NWMO dollars. I think that would be a good January 11th meeting. And then at, from that, we could decide if we were to take 150,000 out for the MSC and whatever other monies we need, then we can have a good full discussion on that. I think from this point though, I would, um, I would, I like the second recommendation of possibly writing a letter that we are interested and we will be investigating that. I think that would be a proactive move for the hotel. 
Um, if council is in agreement with that, I, I would have no problem um, working with Gail and we can draft a letter for uh, Ride Out Bay developments. Is council in agreement with that? Go ahead, Councillor Peroff. Yep, I, I think the letter is, is a good step forward, but a lot of investigation like you guys were uh, both indicating, yes, we need to discuss it first. Okay, Peter, go ahead, Councillor Kissmaker. Yeah, I'm just, uh, just agreeing with what John said. I agree with uh, the letter is starting to have a lot Okay, you're cutting out a bit, Peter. It's that you're in agreement with the letter? Yes. Okay. And uh, Belinda, Councillor Kissmaker? I'm okay with the letter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Being I'll ensure that we don't. Uh, uh, that it's proactive we're not going to tie ourselves to anything that we're going to further investigate and um and i think it, that's our due diligence right to look at it so okay any other further discussion on that action item gail do you need any other direction on that item from council no nope, that's good i'll just connect with you and we can uh, draft something that's appropriate Okay, great. Okay, so moving on now to 11.2. If I can get a mover and a seconder for the support motion. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kissmaker, second by John Peroff. Whereas the opiate crisis is one of the largest public health emergencies of our lifetime, with a death on average about every two hours and a death toll of over 16,360 since 2016, January 2016 to March 2020. And whereas other countries have significantly reduced drug-related fatalities with reforms such as legal regulation of illicit drugs to ensure safe supply and decriminalization for personal use. And whereas the federal government has indicated it is premature to dis discuss these measures until there is a comprehensive support for people to get well. And whereas supports are needed, but measures that save lives are essential if people are to survive and access supports. Whereas the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police has stated that they would agree, the evidence suggests decriminalization for simple possession as an effective way to, as an effective way to reduce the public health and public safety harms associated with substance abuse, causing the government to indicate that it is now deliberating over de decriminalization. And whereas the overdose crisis ranges, showing few signs of abating, therefore be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain does hereby support MUM Stop the Harms, MSATH request for the Government of Canada to declare an overdose crisis on national public health emergency, uh, sorry, a national public health emergency, so that it is taken seriously and funded appropriately. Be it further resolved that Council requests the Government of Canada to immediately seek input from people most affected by the crisis and meet with provinces and territories to develop a comprehensive pan-Canadian overdose action plan which includes comprehensive supports and full consideration of reforms that other countries have used to significantly reduce drug-related fatalities and stigma, such as legal regulation of illicit drugs to ensure safe supply of pharmaceutical alternatives to toxic street drugs and decriminalization for personal use. Be it finally, final, finally resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to Patty Hydro, Minister of Health, Health Canada, Carol Hughes, MP, Algoma Manitoulin and Kappa Skasing. Any discussion on the motion? I'll put it to the vote. Those in favour? And that is carried. None opposed. Okay, moving on to 12, our correspondence information only package. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. 
Belinda, <laughs> Peter. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Peter Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the correspondence information only package attached to the agenda at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the agenda, the information only package for Council? Anything you'd like to discuss? No, John? Okay. Okay, I don't uh, see any. I'll put it to the vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. None opposed. Okay, so moving on now, we go to 14.1. Uh, donations, there's none, 13. And then 14 conferences, seminar, and training. 14.1 is council conference list of dates. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John? And Belinda? Okay, moved by John Peroff, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby approve the expenditures to be incurred by the following to attend the following annual general meetings and or annual conferences. And we need to fill in some names here. So for Roma, that's Rural Ontario Municipal, Municipal Association's chat, Saturday, January 23rd to Tuesday, January 26, 2021. Toronto, and this is a virtual conference council. I can definitely attend that, and I believe Gail can be in attendance. <clears throat> My recommendation um, is that uh, if Belinda could attend, this would be a, a good opportunity to do delegations. We have put in five requests, I believe, to different ministers. So hopefully we get one. Are you open to that, Belinda? Okay. Okay. Okay, number two is the EDCO conference, and that is uh, Economic Developers Council of Ontario, Tuesday, February 2nd to Thursday, February 4th, 2021. Location and format to be determined. And we have Stacey Rendell attending. <clears throat> There's no other further interest to that one. Go ahead, Gail. I just wondered if Stacey, if you thought that it would be um, beneficial for Michael to attend. Yes. Okay, Michael. And Belinda, you had your, go ahead, Belinda, yes. uh, Councillor Kistemaker. Um, You'd like I'll to go. attend? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I have Stacey Rendell, two, Michael McNaughton, three, Belinda Kistemaker. I said his name wrong, didn't I, Stacey? You're smiling. Oh, my goodness. Can I get a correction, please? McDonough. McDonough. Why did I say McNaughton? That doesn't even make sense. Anyway, sorry, Michael. Michael McDonough. Okay, moving on to Ontario Good Roads Association, Monday, February 22nd to Thursday, February 25th, 2020. And uh, I will be attending, and um, just for the public's knowledge that uh, Ontario Good Roads does pay for my um, participation to be there. And are we looking at, uh, is Duane attending this conference again this year? I think that's a good idea if, if he's available. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, Dwayne Goodrow, any other further from Council? Okay, moving on to NOMA, Northwestern Ontario Municipal Association, Wednesday, April 28th to Friday, April 23rd, 2021 in Thunder Bay. And they haven't decided their format yet, it's to be determined. Does that interest anyone on Council? 
John and Peter. I'm a member of uh, like Noma and Thunder Bay are both on the same day. And I'm a, I'm already in uh, the Thunder Bay District Municipal League. I'm a part of their uh, meeting, so. So which one do you figure would be more beneficial for you, John, the Thunder Bay District Municipal League or Noma? Well, they probably both tie in together, right? Is what I'm thinking. I, I'm kind of inquiring, I guess, a bit more about it. Oh, okay, yeah, I, that they're on the same dates. Yeah. Hmm, that seems unusual that they would be booking them on the same date. Because I agree with you, the same people that would be attending one would be attending the other. Uh, go ahead, Councillor uh, Kistemaker, Peter. I, I, can, I can do the NOMA plug. Okay, I have you in for as NOMA. Long as, it, as long as it's virtual. I would. As long as it's virtual? Yes. Okay. So, um, John, in for this resolution, do you mind if I put your name on both, and then we'll get clarification which one well, that's, um, will that's be fine. actually happening? That would be fine. Yes. Okay. All indications are that the Thunder Bay Municipal League will be virtual. There was uh, nobody wants to uh, get together. It's too soon. Yes. Yes. For sure. So. Okay. And then moving on, we have. Uh, just a clerical question, Gail. Do I need to put the mover in the second or on the second page of the resolution or no? Okay. Uh, for Phnom, we have Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities Tuesday, May 18th to Friday, May 21st, 2021 in Timmins and it is virtual and we have Dra Councillor Drago Stefanik attending. And is there another councillor that would like to attend or staff? Uh, go ahead, Gail. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, I would like to go. I've never been to Phnom and I think it would be uh, a new experience and a northern perspective on uh, conferences. Okay, great. And John, were you wanting to attend Phnom? Yeah, I could go to Phnom if, uh, if, if you want. It's virtual anyways. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, FCM, Federation of Canadian Municipalities, Thursday, June 3rd to Sunday, June 6th, 2021 in Montreal, format to be determined. I'm going to assume it will be virtual, I'm not sure. But uh, I have put my name down on this one because we've uh, dis this came to me when we had the meeting for the Municipal Service Corporation on Monday night, um, just with the different funding envelopes that FCM is doing for housing, that I thought maybe it might be a good time to make some connections there and, um, go to an FCM conference? Go ahead, Gail. I'm thinking then Stacy might be a good option for that. Sorry to throw that at you, Stacy. that no. we didn't discuss that or anything, but um, it would fit. Is that, uh, am I okay to put Stacy Randell down as well? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay, anyone else for FCM? Okay, and then our final is AMO, Association of Municipalities of Ontario, Sunday, August 15th to Wednesday, August 18th, 2021, London, form to be, format to be determined. I did, um, my understanding is it will be virtual, and we do have uh, number one is Drago Stefanik. And um, my thoughts for our community on this, I have not put my name in for AMO. I did attend AMO this year in Drago's replacement. Um, the conference was uh, quite overwhelming just because it was this new digital format, but I think it would be really uh, beneficial for someone to go. And if we do have a delegation, I found uh, Stacy and I had attended together and I found it very beneficial to do the delegations online. Um, as as much as you don't get the personal aspect, you get to see face to face. It 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 actually works well um, in the meeting format. I I did. I found it beneficial. So.
So I put that out there to council, to anyone that would like to attend. And Gail, were you thinking of attending AMO? I, I can, I'm available, so um, yeah, sure. Okay, Gail, and uh, any other councillors? John? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll attend that if... Uh... Okay, and I've added uh, number two, John Peroff, and number three, Gail Jeremy. And I uh, didn't finish my thought on that. I was thinking that next year for AMO, that might be the fall. And when I say next year, now I'm talking 2022, that that would be a good opportunity for myself to attend AMO. And then we can set up uh, whichever government's in power at that time and set up our, uh, we're going to be looking ahead to a new council and uh, we can set up our community to succeed and try and get as many contacts and wrap up any loose ends or whatever we have to set up for that next term of council. So that was my thinking on that. And uh, I don't like to go too far ahead now with COVID. Everything can change. Everything's subject to change. So go ahead, Gail. So I was just trying to look for the Thunder Bay District Mis Municipal League conference and I can't find it anywhere so um, we can make a call tomorrow to um, the executive director and see um, but I, I was thinking maybe they're sort of one day one right after the other maybe that's why it's listed that way I don't know because it's I think Noma is kind of the parent of Thunder Bay District Municipal League so anyways I can find out you know okay thank you for that okay so um, we have it all filled out I'll just reread the first part. It's be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town, or sorry, moved by John Peroff, second by Belinda Kissmaker, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby approve the expenditures to be incurred by the following to attend the following annual general meetings and or annual conferences. And Roma, it's Cheryl Fort, Belinda Kissmaker, Gail Jeremy, Edco, Stacey Randell, Micah McDonough, Belinda Kissmaker. OGRA is Cheryl Fort, Dwayne Goodrow, Noma, Peter Kistemaker, John Peroff, Thunder Bay Municipal League, John Peroff, Phenom, Drago Stefanik, Gail Jeremy, John Peroff, FCM, Cheryl Fort, Stacey Randell, AMO, Drago Stefanik, John Peroff, and Gail Jeremy. Okay, and uh, I put it to the vote. All those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Okay, so we are moving on to ah, six, 15 committee reports. There's none, 16 news and other business, and we have a COVID-19 update. And I'll hand that over to Gail. Okay, so um, as we're all aware, the cases uh, are getting closer and closer to our community. There are currently, uh, I'm not sure exactly how many, but seven or eight, I'm going to say the last I heard in Marathon. And yesterday there was one confirmed case in, in Manitowoc, but uh, I think lots of people uh, isolating, self-isolating at home due to an outbreak at the Hamlow Mine. So I guess they're still waiting on that. So it's been tough times in those communities, uh, stressful times. So I, I really want to reiterate that, um, you know, we're not immune to this here. It's, 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 chances are it's going to come to our community. So please, please, please follow the protocols. Um, even if you feel close to somebody or you, um, you know, feel safe, that doesn't mean they don't have it. You could have it. Um, you just never know. Um, I think that uh, the latest thing that, that's being reported by the Ministry of Health and the, and the health unit is that uh, there's lots of, uh, well, it's mostly all community spread now as opposed to, you know, coming from travel or whatnot, but um, lots of uh, spread in workplaces where people feel familiar with each other. They take their masks off or they, you know, sit together closely, um, just aren't sanitizing, all that kind of stuff. So if anyone uh, online that's, that's in a workplace, please you know, spread that word, be careful. Um, 
And I think uh, in the next little while, in the next month or so, we'll be focusing on uh, messages for the holiday season. So Maricourt's going to be recording some uh, messaging uh, with CFNO that will go out across the region. Um, I think that may be happening tomorrow. Hopefully that will start on Friday. There's, uh, I don't have them with me, but there's four, four different messages just on uh, encouraging people to be kind, uh, respect each other, you know, wear the mask, sanitize, uh, stay home uh, if you're sick, um, that type of thing. Uh, we're going to be, Porcupine Health Unit is spearheading a, a media release for the whole region. Uh, they have the municipalities on board, the hospitals on board, uh, the First Nations in the area on board, and uh, the schools, I believe. So they'll be sending out a uh, a draft for us to review and make sure everybody is uh, has their input and agrees with what's being said and then that will be released at the same time from all locations. They will also be doing some radio uh, broadcasts over the, the season. Um, and just, I think this is really important for us in a small town to think about because isolation has kept us safe to some extent. That's not happening anymore. In fact, on our, our ministry call yesterday, um, they basically said it's it's uh, used to be, it's not so much that cases are now, they are increasing, but it's not just uh, uh, restricted to Toronto and Peel and York and, and Ottawa. Well, Ottawa's going down now, but those areas, it's spreading across the province. So in a community like ours, um, it's, it's, it's dangerous. If somebody gets this and they get really sick, it's gonna be very dangerous. We don't have the, the medical facilities to handle that. And the communities around us, um, there's more and more cases. The ICU beds are getting filled up. And there may not be somewhere for our people to be sent if something happens. So, you know, I think by respecting protocols, we're also respecting our healthcare workers all across the province, all across the country. It puts more pressure on them if, if we're not, um, you know, being responsible. So just, you know, message, be kind, be responsible, be smart, stay safe um follow the protocols uh and then the, the last thing i wanted to say is that today um i see that uh canada approved the pfizer vaccine um for distribution in canada so i, I didn't actually watch the release or read read the uh Dwayne actually sent me the the, the uh, link but i didn't actually read it but i read the headline so that's good news for us um and we're continuing with our community control group meetings they're weekly um and we will uh, have our next one tomorrow. And um, that's all I can think of. There's a Facebook Live uh, Q&A tomorrow night with uh, Mayor Fort and Dr. Catton from the uh, Porcupine Health Unit. So tune in if you can. I think that'll be really informative. Um, we actually, some of us actually had a call with Dr. Catton last Friday. And um, she's really full of information, really positive um, just really, really good to listen to. So if you have questions, send them in, ask them online, uh, I encourage you. And uh, that's all, thank you. Thank you, Gail. Yeah, and just to follow up with the Facebook Live, um, I just so the community knows, when it uh, starts tomorrow night at seven, I will give opportunity to give questions, put questions in the comment box until 7.30, and I will grab those questions as we're talking to Dr. Catton. And I want to follow up with uh, what Gail said about the vaccine. I was in a call uh, yesterday with um, the rollout plan for the vaccine for our, our province. And I have to say that the Premier and the Deputy Premier, uh, it was a really good call. And they do have a plan. They are planning on how this will all come about. So it's um, trying to get the logistics down. And my understanding is in this first phase, it'll be 1.2 million Ontarians that'll be vaccinated. And the vaccine works in a two-phase process. The Pfizer vaccine does. It's a, a first initial vaccination. And then 21 days later, within a very short time period, you have to get a sex, second vaccination. So um, those topics are being talked about. So I just want to give that out there. And, and I have given Dr. Catton some questions about the vaccine too so we will be talking about that on the live tomorrow night. So any questions uh, for the COVID update from council or anything that council would like us to be focusing on at the emergency management group meetings?
Okay. Okay, so I just I uh, follow up with what Gail said. Let's ensure that we're encouraging our community to follow the protocols and let's get through this um, winter and hopefully with as, as least amount of cases as possible and then we can um, have the vaccinations and move forward. Okay, we're going to move on to 16.2 Centre of Ontario Committee. And I'll, uh, Stacey, would you like to speak to your report before I open up to questions? I just wanted to speak to one aspect of when I was, when I wrote about the recommendation for the signage, um, we had discussed at the, the committee level, either the Three Bear site or the Anderson Park. And after I submitted this report, uh, Gail reminded me that we would need permitting if we put it on the, the highway. So it wouldn't actually be right at the Three Bear site. It would probably, it would be on the Front Street side, not on the highway. And that would remove the, the need for permitting. So I just wanted to clarify that. And if there's any questions, I can try to answer them. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Stacy about the um, Centre of Ontario report? One question I do have about the road signs is if we do, we can put other signs thereafter. Like if we, because my concern is, is that I have no problem with these signs going up. They're beautiful, but we are going into a rebranding process and this could change. But so if we were to get permitting, those could be transferred to our other signs very easily. Okay, we're not going to do the, I was worried we were going to do the process twice for, okay, great. Okay, council, any discussion on? I'll go ahead, Peter, sorry. Yeah, Stacy, uh, I don't know if you see this or not. Who designed the sign? So the sign um, comes from the act, our last rebranding exercise. It's actually one of the hydro signs. So um, the economic development intern had some, um, he got a lot of sign ideas from the actual committee and he took those ideas and he actually just implemented it onto the, the branding sign for, it's actually one that was a highway sign before. So he just put the new I information on. I just like how the three bears blend together. It's pretty neat. Hey, thank you for that. Okay, so Stacy, you're recommending that uh, the signage be installed at the back of the town hall and the Three Bears site on Front Street to avoid any highway fees at this time, correct? Is council in favor of that recommendation? And these signs that are in, pictured here is what would be put up. Okay. And um, I'm wondering too, are we able to, is there anywhere on our current Welcome to Horn Pain sign that we could put a smaller segment of this on there? Are we able to do that? Our, like our main signs that come into town? I don't see why we couldn't. Um... I'm sure there's enough, I mean, there's not a lot on them, so I'm sure there could be, uh, I'd have to look at the sign again, of course, or Dwayne could look at the sign, but uh, I would think there would be space enough on there. Okay. Would that be something that council would be um, in favor of if the committee was in favor of it too? Just to kind of give them a heads up if they wanted to go forward with that? Good. Okay. And the recommendation number two is the committee recommends option one for trail and parking to the geographic center of Ontario site. And I'm a bit confused on which one that is, Stacy. Sorry. So option one would be the, the map that's attached. Okay. So if you need to 
if you need to know what the specific roads are and such, I'm going to have to defer that to Belinda and Dwayne. <laughs> okay, so is this for preliminary right now, Stacy? So this is just to have things available for the public right now? So what the, what the discussion has been, um, the committee uh, has looked at uh, a bunch of different op options for the map, and this is um, one that first, uh, Belinda had done by, Belinda, can you clarify who that was? Okay, so I talked to Steve Turig. He's uh, um, is in charge of our bush operations. And uh, I asked him, I told him what we have been talking about at our meetings, about uh, using an accessible road. Anyway, um, there is a the line in purple on the, if you go to the last map, that road is basically already there. So on the highway, if you use this map to send to the highway, they would know where to put in a parking area. And there's a road base there that we can use that's in purple that would go all the way to um, uh, Charlie Mays Road. And uh, that is where the uh, walk into the center of Ontario is. So now we're not using uh, Norms Road at all, which was a very a safety concern for us. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the second map is actually the one that you guys should use if we use this map it basically all we have to do is um tie into the, that road in order to get to charlie mays road okay john and uh Dwayne, you guys could probably elaborate if you want <laughs> go ahead Dwayne. It's a branch road uh, that comes off of uh, Charlie Mays Road. It would keep you away from all basic traffic going down Norms Road. So now we have parking uh, on off the highway, and you can, um, I don't know, you could maybe even bike in, walk in, whatever, right to uh, where you have to walk into the center of Ontario. Okay, go ahead, John. Yeah, no, I, I like the idea of putting a highway entrance there. Um, the idea of putting a parking lot on the highway, uh, I'm just wondering if that, because I, I understand, I guess you guys want to walk, the idea is to walk all the way in, right? And get the it's full to make park. it up, yes. But if the, if the parking was inside where the cutover is, then we wouldn't have to deal with the MTO parking, right? Inside like if, where if, the cutover is where on the map? I'm not yeah, sure. sorry, if um, off the highway, you, you get a MTO permit for a highway entrance, and then you drive in, you know, 100 meters or something, and then have your parking lot there on, in the forest. You could do that. Because the parking on the highway would be kind of expensive, I think. The other thing is, is if you use this, um, and we have the the uh, accessibility already, then it's going to cut down on our costs. I think that's the way I look at it, and it's giving us a head start already. Yeah, I think somebody mentioned this roadway at the beginning when we first started talking about this anyways. Yeah. So it's a good plan, yeah. Okay. So to clarify on that, Cheryl, or Mayor Fort, uh, if, if we go with this map, then we could potentially go for the permitting of the entrance. And for the signage, we can move forward with that one step. And we wouldn't have to hire a consultant to plan a trail because we have an existing road bed going in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, how long is this, like from the highway? Is it in here? Did I miss that? How long is the the actual trail then? Like to go from the highway walk into Charlie Mays Road and then into the, the trail that we snowshoed last year? 
Do we know that, how far that is? Dwayne, can you answer that question? I can't remember. I have to measure it off. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, okay. But it would we be, I'm just that. trying to figure out how long of a walk it would be. Like this is something you could do in three hours? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I can I can get those details. No problem. Okay. I was hoping to try it and see what it was how well how, how long it took anyway. <laughs> okay, do you need do we have we don't have a resolution for this uh report, do we? No. I, I just think that this will give us um uh this will make the process go a little quicker too. And mm -hmm. let's get moving. <laughs> yeah. So do we need um for the committee, would it be best to have a resolution saying that uh this is the going to be the official trail of for the center? Uh, I don't put it to Gail or Stacy. I don't think it would go back to the committee level to do the planning on this. I think this would be referred to staff from council. Yeah. And then if if staff say Gail wants the committee to look at an aspect of it, then that would be sent down to the committee level. Okay, so I guess do we need a resolution for anything? I would say yeah, you would need you're going to need a resolution to identify where you're going to want to go in. I don't know if you're if you're ready for that or not. Uh wasn't really sure what to prepare or where the discussion was going to go. Um, you can write one out if you think you're ready for it. I don't know if um, we should speak to the MNR a little bit first. Uh, we can, you know, go ahead and, and apply for a permit, a trail permit. Um, you know, have you decided? We need, you know, where are you going to have the parking? Going to have it on the highway? You going to have it part way in? Um, how big an area for parking? Like all those kind of things. Like I think it'd be nice to have sort of those details um, kind of half figured out uh, before we pass a resolution so we can kind of in, uh, include as much as we can in there. Okay. Okay, well, I have no problem. I just wanted to know for the direction for staff where and when we need that resolution. So um, when moving forward, uh, just a second. Go ahead, John. No, I was just gonna make a comment there that you like where that purple line is on the map, if you uh, use that, and as it's the MTO that you'd have to get the permit from to come off the highway, and yeah. they would have all the details for you. I mean, uh, I would really recommend that a parking lot be put inside about 100 or 200 meters in the forest to avoid any additional fees from the MTO parking. Mm -hmm. But uh, to connect to that road that uh, you've seen there is the logical thing to do. So, I mean, we could pretty much authorize the administration to go ahead and uh, investigate that. Yeah, I think that's where we're at. I'll go ahead, Gail. So I am just want to clear, I don't know what the difference is between the two maps that are on there, um, unless I'm missing something. So, but no. we were looking at the last map, Belinda? Yeah, take the last map. The, it's a better okay. map. I just okay. asked them to uh, uh, show where it connects onto the highway. So oh, that's I why I did the second one. Okay. I see. Okay. Okay. Well, it we was can really discuss with the MNR and the MTO, and we can. I mean, we can do that. And um, but if you can get the other information, Belinda, the distances and stuff, at least yeah. got some more information and. Maybe we could put this back on for um, January, January meeting. Yeah, great. And then if we yeah. declare it for the January meeting, I can uh, talk about it with the bear names and everything on the mayor's address. How's that? Sure. And we can put a whole moving forward, maybe get people excited about rebranding and that sort of thing. Um, on that last map too, it has a legend. I asked them to put a legend on it. So. Yeah, it's looking tells. about three kilometers with your legend. Sorry to walk over there, Belinda. No, that's fine. Does that seem about right? Does that sound about right, John? Three kilometers? Like if you're I'm going just, from the uh, highway? Yeah, you're, you're right on the money from the highway to the entrance to the trail to the center of Ontario is about three kilometers. 
Okay, right on great. The I just measured it. <laughs> oh, there we go. We don't have there to go further details. Oh, well, that's I even better. I feel good about myself now. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good call. <laughs> okay, so, oh, go ahead. It's, it's about 250 meters from the highway to the edge of the uh, existing forestry road. Okay. Okay. And so is that fairly, like that would be walkable this winter? Yeah. Well, okay. Road. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So staff, do you have enough direction then? We'll put it on our uh, January meeting and we'll look at trying to move forward with this as our road or as our trail to the center of Ontario. We do. Yep. Okay. That's exciting stuff. Congratulations to the committee. I, uh, Hats off to you for all your hard work, and uh, it's going to be exciting. And I'm looking forward to seeing those signs. <laughs> We're changing the face of horn pain, one sign at a time. Go ahead, Gail. Just one question, John. You were just saying, uh, are you talking about, you're saying about 250 meters. Is that where the clearing is? Is that what you're talking about? From the uh, highway? The ed no, because the, the actual road stops short of the edge of the clearing. So from the highway, that bush reserve is uh, is about 140 meters of bush, and then you have another uh, 100 meters to the edge of the road. Okay, so there's that much that would be uncleared. Is that what you mean? Yeah. About That's 140 okay. meters of non-cleared wood. Okay. And then an extra 100 meters of cleared bush. I, I'm okay. sure there's standing timber there, like young forest. Okay. But, Thanks. Uh, so just to further that, so we would need an entrance. We were making an entrance to that area, <clears throat> the road entrance off the highway. Okay. Yes. Okay. So any further discussion on Centre of Ontario? Okay. We'll move on. 16.3. Oh, I'm getting echoing here. 16.3 to set a special meeting for the regional broadband. So we discussed this during Gail's report. We're looking at setting that meeting for January the 11th with, um, does that work for council? January the 11th, it's a Monday evening. And then uh, let me go back to that report. It's included in the report for the hotel commitment. If if um, council wanted to do that about how we would allocate the NWMO dollars. And Gail, go ahead. Are we going to be, we'll be receiving a further package on that or just a com uh, accumulation of all the recommendations so far? For the community wellbeing funds? Yes. Um, probably something similar to what is included in the MSC or the hotel MSC report. Um, I mean, it might be add a little bit more to it, but I, I think that the the basic stuff is in there now. Yeah. But we'll provide something fresh. Yeah. Okay. So council, you have that uh, information there. And um, this is going to be a really good discussion and we need to have it. Of moving forward we've we had our budget documents so you have those documents now and if we want to include that we could have the north superior regional broadband network regional broadband project project uh the presentation and then we can also discuss the community well-being fund does that sound like a good special meeting for council yes mm -hmm. okay So if I can get a mover and a seconder, Peter and John. How would you like me to word that, Gail? Just um, a bullet point with community well-being funds? Yeah, that'd be good.
Okay, so moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby set a special meeting of Council for the purpose outlined below. Purposes outlined below. Northern Superior Regional Broadband Network, NSRBN, Regional Broadband Project, a recorded presentation, and the Community Wellbeing Funds. For 6 p.m. on Monday, January the 11th, 2021, at a virtual meeting room. And those in favor? And that's carried, none opposed. Gail, did you want to speak? Sorry, go ahead. I just wondered if you wanted to set uh, another one for the Municipal Service Corporation for the original date of February 3rd that we were thinking to set that one for while we're here. Okay, can I use this second resolution because we weren't sure what council would want? Do you want me to just cross out and put you can do that or there's there's a couple of blank ones at the back of your package whatever you prefer okay okay can we um if we do a written one can we type it up after yeah we can type yeah? It up after, yeah okay well i'll just i'll use this one then it'll just be less writing for me sure yeah okay and um What would you like to, I have Municipal Service Corporation. Um, establishment. Okay. And then we're also going to talk about the, uh, well, I'm assuming, I, I'm not sure where your, where your discussion on the, um, um, the hotel venture um, share, if, if that would fit in with this meeting here. The, the, for, on the third you're going to have another discussion on that okay or, would that just fit in underneath if it was to be transferred like if that it, just, uh, if it, it could or or if you wanted to have that discussion uh stacy and i were talking about this earlier because we have to have information ready for all of that so the the third is is good timing for us stacy for the getting the packages together um I'm not sure what else you would need, what all you would need, uh, other than obviously the legalities that would be involved and how how that would be handled in a transfer if, if that was going to happen. Um, I was going, what I'm getting at is is if you wanted to discuss uh, that hotel share earlier, you could put that on the January 20th regular meeting, or you could leave it and and have it underneath your. Uh, Municipal Service Services Corporation discussion. Okay, are we able to um, discuss that with the community well-being dollars as well? If it's coming out of those well, dollars, it, it is gonna it is going to come up because that's part of what you're deciding on, right? So, um, yes, you can. It's just I I don't know if we'll be able to get all the we'll try. I don't know if we'll be able to get all the all the answers that you'll need in that amount of time, but we can certainly try. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Well, we can do an initial discussion there is if at that time, council, if um, just looking at if those funds were taken out of that allotment of money, not looking into the details of it, because then if we decided at a further meeting that no, that's not going to be a good decision, we can always allocate that 150,000 to other funds. Would that that make sense? So that we're not putting pressure in, you know, we have Christmas is coming and that and really, realistically, the amount of days we have to prepare for the January 11th meeting on that front is, it's unrealistic to think we're gonna have any information for that. So why don't we proceed that way? Does that suffice for everybody that we, we look at that on the 11th, but as just a one lump sum, and then we look at what we would do if we were to take it out and set it aside. And then if our final decision of that would be on the 3rd, February 3rd. And do you need an extra, do you want me to label that specifically, Gail? I think I think maybe it's, it is a good idea, so it'll be clear to everybody. Okay, so, I think so. Um, what do we have on this agenda? Let's see. We have Municipal Service Corporation establishment, and the second uh, purpose would be. I'm just going to use the same wording from uh, 
days if I can find it. Uh, oh, we had uh, opportunity to participate. And then I had Dash Hotel Venture. Dash Municipal Service Corporation. Okay, on this uh, particular motion, can I just leave it as Hotel Venture because it's all under the Municipal Service sure. Corporation? Yeah, okay. Sure. Okay, this is what I've gotten down for Council before I ask for a mover and a seconder. It's uh, be it resolved that Council, the Corporation, the Township of Horn Payne does hereby set a special meeting of Council for the purposes outlined below, Municipal Service Corporation establishment, and second point, opportunity to participate in Hotel Venture for 6 p.m. on Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021 at a virtual meeting room. Does that uh, work for everyone? And just as a reminder, Council, first special meetings, that's all that is discussed at those meetings. Okay, Great. if I can get a mover and a seconder then. Peter? And Belinda? Okay, hey, moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council Corporation, the Township of Hornpain, does hereby set a special meeting of Council for the purposes outlined below. Municipal Service Corporation establishment and the opportunity to participate Dash Hotel Adventure for 6 p.m. on Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021, at a virtual meeting room. And those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Okay, moving on to 16.4, we have the excavator. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter, Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain, does hereby authorize Melissa Chenier, Client Services Manager Treasurer, to transfer funds from the Community Wellbeing Reserve to go towards the purchase of an excavator. Any discussion on the motion? Okay. I just had one question why we didn't include the exact amount in the transfer. This seems kind of open ended to me. The exact amount, meaning like the one what is going to be transferred. One is it the full it amount of the excavator? One sixteen. What? Sorry, I gotta have to. I have to pull up the resolution. I don't have that up. Yeah, no, that's okay. I just usually we put the full like the amount that's should actually. Be, well, it should be one sixteen. One sixteen thousand. Okay, one hundred and sixteen thousand. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I'm just, I just want clarification on it. And I actually, when I reread this this afternoon, I didn't even think of it till now. I think um, we, what, what happened was we had, we had passed a resolution to reallocate the funds that were set aside for demolition in a previous um, resolution, but um, then we didn't do one to, uh, to authorize the taking from reserves. So I guess the, the amount just got mixed, but it was, or sorry, missed, but it's 116,000. Okay, do we want to add that to the resolution? I think yes, please. Yes, okay. So to go towards the purchase of an excavator in the amount of, and then add it that way? Yep. And it's 116,000. Yeah. 116,000, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, so I've added to the resolution to read at the end the purchase of an excavator, comma, in the amount of $116,000. So, just to be clear, the excavator wasn't 116, it was the, that's what we're transferring out of reserves, which I think everybody understands, but I just want to make that clear. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, I put that to the vote to council. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. 
Okay, moving on to 16.5 annual council training. Would you like to speak to this, Gail? Um, yeah, so part of the uh, recommendations from the service delivery review were to perform annual council training. And that's something that we, we typically have done at the beginning of council and maybe halfway through the term if there was a new council come on or something like that. But it is, I think, a good practice to, to do. So um, I, I actually had made some inquiries probably three or four months ago now, and then it just got put onto the back burner again. Um, but it is something that we need to get going, I think. So I think since it hasn't been specifically organized yet, um, are there any specific topics that council would like to see covered, you know, along with the regular roles and responsibilities and conflict of interest and confidentiality and all those types of things? Is there anything specific that you'd like training on? And I can include that. Okay, thank you, Gail. And I put that out to Council. Uh, John, did you, Councillor Peroff? Uh, I can't think of any, thank you. I can't think of any specific training, but I'm wondering financial considerations, approximately $3,000 annually, and that is for everybody okay thanks. it would be like a group a virtual group or um if it's not virtual well if it's virtual probably it might be cheaper but if, if you're bringing someone in it would be a group a group thing thanks is there um some kind of idea that they would give us uh the government wayfinders has for additional training because well, typically, I, typically it's what I kind of said. It's it's just refreshers on, um, you know, whether it be uh, dealing with the public or uh, governance versus administration, um, conflict of interest, ombudsman, uh, uh, integrity commissioner, all those types of things. Um, mind else, my mind is going uh, blank for anything else, but. Uh, I don't know, maybe freedom of information things. Um, just general uh, refreshers because, I mean, we work with this stuff every day and we, we need training and get training as well regularly, but um, I think it, it stays fresher in our minds because that's what we do all day long, whereas, you know, it's harder when you have other lives and other jobs and it's it's just good, I think, to to have those. It's something that should have probably been done all along for years. Yeah, I have to second that, Gil. I agree that it should be an annual, there should mm -hmm. be an annual training. And then and then as counselors, when we're new, those things that you think back of, oh, I wish I would have known that when I started. Those types of things can help our new council um, because you always have new people coming on and that sort of thing. And, and you want to get them prepared as best they can so that the movement of our municipal business can go forward without too much of a delay between councils as well. So I, I'm in agreement. Um, the one thing I would like to see some training on, and I think it would be imperative for our council right now, is some sort of training to show how planning connects everything, like why your strategic plan, where it should go from there, what kind of questions we should be asking of staff, um, timelines, that sort of thing. Another thing I just thought of was committees. Training on committees would be good for all mm -hmm. of us. And uh, one other further comment I want to say too about training. I think it's a good practice for the municipality of when we think of the entity of the municipality itself, it protects the entity because we've taken training, we're keeping our training up, and um, and then that just that just 
correlates into good decision making. So I, I do agree with that as well, that that's, I think it's a good protective measure for the municipality as a corporation. So, so what are, Gail, do you want, I can't get the, my iPad is not bringing up the document in front of me. Are you looking for a date of when you'd like to do that? Not really. What I'd like to do is just uh, contact a few uh, people that we're aware of and see what their costs are, what they could provide and how they would do it. And then to see, um, come back and see what fits for council and try to okay. melt them together that way. Okay. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping earlier in the year than, than later. But yeah, not, I was not, thinking, in not in January. <laughs> no, no, no. I was thinking sometime after we have the budget passed, like at the middle of April, the third week of mm -hmm. April or it's something spring, in there. Yeah. 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 Not That's too into the summer. Too. It's uh, yeah. once the nice weather comes out and after our COVID winter, we're all going to be yeah. not wanting to be in front of a computer. I know that. So <laughs> get us before the snow melts. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, in June? No. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Hey, we don't even have snow right now. <laughs> Okay, so Councillor, are you in favor of that or any other questions on that? Go ahead, Councillor Peroff, John. Yeah, sorry, uh, before we finish, I just had one other topic maybe that would be in, of interest, would be something on the economics or uh, um, uh, financing Financial. of how, how a community uh, would work and how it all fits together in the planning portion. Good idea, yeah. good idea. Any other further recommendations? And I guess, Gail, you can reach out to Drago if he has any thoughts. Okay. Yes, I will. Great. Okay, then we'll leave that. We don't, uh, we're going to uh, council committee updates. And after this council, just for your information, we are gonna take a 10 minute break. So um, I'll start with John. Oh. <laughs> um, Sorry, you're the first one I looked put at. on the spot there. <laughs> Very well. Um, since the last meeting, uh, it's been pretty quiet. Had the LCC meeting went well. They talked, you know. Um, I also attended both uh, a webinar from IESO on December third on the demand response working group, and once again on December eighth was the Northwest uh, Planning Initiatives. Um, it's driving it forward and it's, uh, it's, it is interesting to see um, the way the future is going to be with the electrical system and how we can be a, more of a part of it. And uh, that's basically all I have to say. Okay, great. And thank you for attending that, uh, those webinars for sure. And Gail and I were setting up uh, a meeting with Terry Young, and I would love for you to be a part of that, John. I would love that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, go ahead, Gail. I haven't heard back from Susan yet, but right now, John, um, we we're thinking uh, she had offered us Monday morning from 10 to 11. Um, so I had written back to confirm but she hasn't reconfirmed because there were a few days in between there so that's tentatively what it would be that's this coming monday yeah i uh, should be i'm just checking my schedule here yeah should be Good, good. Okay. Okay, moving on. Belinda Kistemaker, Councillor Kistemaker. I had, I have nothing at the, this time. Nothing. Okay. You're busy with the Centre of Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Councillor Kistemaker, Peter. Um, I don't. I don't know if I mentioned this last meeting or if it's been in the timelines and stuff, but uh, I've, uh, if I noted, uh, if I told you about the substantial donation for the generator at the hospital. Yes, you did, but you couldn't tell us who. Oh, that's okay. That's all I, I'm sorry. That's all I wasn't sure if that was. 
one last meeting in this one, but uh, that's all. There hasn't there hasn't been a meeting since then at the hospital, and nothing else to report. Okay, so you're just teasing us. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Well, that's great. I'm glad to hear that they uh, got that uh, contribution. And I did write a letter in support and gave those to Drago that uh, they can distribute as they see fit to whom they see fit for more funding. Um, I want to reiterate uh, a thank you for the tree lighting and for the work that was put in to making our Pavilion Park beautiful for the Christmas season. And uh, I look forward to next year celebrating hopefully in person with our community. And I also want to take note at this time just to acknowledge the work that has been done by staff on all the bylaws and that that we're going to be looking at this evening. It's a lot of work to put together public consultation, to put the meetings together, to round up all the information and come with a finished document like this. So I want to say thank you and it is appreciated and I recognize all the hard work. And um, Further that, I uh, was invited to a webinar on the 50th anniversary of the report that the Canadian government put out for the status of women. And that took place on Monday. When I get the um, link to the YouTube of the recording, I encourage anyone to watch the hour and a half. There was five panelists on there. It was a really great discussion. And it talks about the differences in our country and different things that need to be implemented so that everyone can fully participate and I thought it was really well done it was um, I actually left there with more reading material two more books I want to read so it was really good um, the other thing that I just I mentioned earlier that I was involved with the call from the province on uh, yesterday about the vaccine and how it's going to be distributed and the other uh, comment I wanted to mention that uh, the hotel developer was in town again last week. Unfortunately, I did not get to see him because he was, um, I was at work and by the time we had crossed paths, but I did reach out to him and he did make it home safe again. So I think that's it, unless you have any questions for me. Okay. Okay, Council, thank you for all your hard work. We're going to take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back to um, just let me see here. Yeah, we're going through all the bylaws before we go into close, correct? Just don't want to, okay, yes. we're going to take a 10 minute break now. So we'll meet back, actually, 11 minute break. We'll meet back here at 8 15. Okay.
Okay, I see all of council is back, so we will continue. It is 8.15, and we're on 18 bylaws. So 18.1 is the comprehensive user fee bylaw. If I could get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda and John. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1825, being a bylaw to establish comprehensive user fees and service charges, be read a first and second time and considered considered read a third time and finally passed. Any discussion on the bylaw? None? Okay, go ahead, Gail. I just wanted to point out uh, in my report, which I know you've all read, but um, there were some questions asked about the uh, equipment rental, um, about the excavator and whether the float, floating costs were included in, in the fees, and they are not, they would be extra, um, just for anyone who hasn't seen, seen that report. Um, and does the cost of the rental excavator include insurance and liability coverage? And yes, it does. Uh, in the meeting about purchasing the excavator, and I think this was a meeting, not the last meeting, but a previous meeting when we were maybe in August. Uh, it was mentioned that it could be contracted to Hornpain Lumber. What jobs do you foresee at Hornpain Lumber? And if it's for the ash, has there been clearance environmentally to dispose and use this ash at our landfill? Uh, equipment, the answer is equipment will not be contracted out at any time with a, without an, a municipal operator, so that shouldn't be a concern, and it was not going to be uh, used for ash. Uh, I didn't actually put that in there, but it's not, was not intended to be used for ash. Um, and is our public works equipment going to be used in the bush roads for lumber forestry companies? Is the equipment insured on these roads outside of township limits? <clears throat> uh, our concern is to transport traffic on these bush roads and our equipment's getting damaged and uh, inoperable, putting our township maintenance at risk. And I have been going back and forth with the insurance company. They've been asking uh, questions back and forth. I haven't got a firm response on that yet, but I should have one very soon. So I, uh, I will follow up with, uh, with the person who asked that question. Um, and as far as the township still encouraging potential customers to go to our local contractors for equipment uh rental first before contracting with us and the answer is yes because the anyone who asks for service from the township has to fill out a form that they've contacted all the local contractors that offer the same services before they've come to us because we do not want to undercut anybody um, it's just there as a service if somebody needs it so um those were questions that i just thought i'd put the answers right into the report so just wanted to clarify that Okay, thank you, Gail. I just had, um, after reviewing um, the bylaw, there was just two things that occurred to me that I needed clarification on. The one was um, uh, transfer of payment or correction of payment due to client error. Could I just get an example of that? I'm on the fees uh, schedule four or schedule A, page two of two. Oh, let me see. Oh, I think it's just for um, uh, sometimes people have uh, made payments on, I'm assuming, I didn't speak to Melissa about this, but people, if they've made payments on the wrong accounts and we have to switch it back, it's just to pay for the administrative cost of taking it off the one account, put it onto the other because it just takes time. Okay, okay. And just the other, just one small, and it's just a small um, issue with the document is just on page uh, one of one and it's uh, schedule D. It's just the refunds will not be issued. It just needs a D instead of issues. And I'm sure. Oh, yes. Okay. And there's Perfect. just two spots there. If we could just clean that up. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Hey, no problem. I was just. Oh, go ahead. Belinda Kistemaker, Councillor Kistemaker. Since you're taking note of that, on um, uh, the last schedule, 
E mm -hmm. at the very bottom is says prices for us to be a rental. Do not floating. Could you oh, yeah. include? Include? Yes, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Okay, any other further comments on, or questions about the user fee by law? Okay, I'm gonna put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried, all in favor. Okay, moving on to 18.2. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter, John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1826 being a bylaw to endorse the deputy clerk to solemnize Mar civil marriages hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any uh, discussion on the bylaw? Okay, we'll put it to the vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. All in favor. And we're on 18.3. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda, Peter. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Peter Kistemaker, be it resolved that bylaw number 1827 being a bylaw to regulate traffic and parking on highways, private property, and municipal property within the township of Horn Payne be read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any discussion on the motion or on the bylaw? I just have one comment of uh, clarification. In the fee structure, did we have to get that approved by MTO or we can we can charge for the parking fees? They they have to be the fees have to be uh, done through the province. These were we didn't do anything. We didn't even look at the fees because I I don't think these were ever given to the province. So we okay. didn't do anything with the fee schedule. We're just we're having um, Marcel from uh, Manitowoc is going to help us with that. He's going to set us up with all of that. So when we do the comprehensive review, that will be taken care of. Okay. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, I put that to the vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. None opposed. Okay, 18.4 is the garbage pickup and landfill transfer station contract. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter. And John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1828 being a bylaw to enter into a garbage pickup and landfill transfer station operation agreement with Horn Payne Service Centre Incorporated be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any discussion on the motion or the bylaw? Okay, those in favour? And that is carried, none opposed. Okay, moving on to 18.5.
for the COVID-19 Technology Adoption Fund. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda and John. Okay, moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1829 being a bylaw to enter into a contribution agreement with the Sault Ste. Marie Innovation Centre with, reg with regard to the COVID-19 Technology Adoption Fund be here read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any discussion on the motion or the bylaw? Okay, I put that to the vote. Those in favour? And that is passed, none opposed. Carried. <clears throat> Thank you, Stacy, for your hard work. Okay, moving on. 18 point, sorry, I gotta move my 18.6, road maintenance agreement. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and John. Okay, hey, moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1830 being a bylaw to authorize a road maintenance agreement between the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain and Hornpain Lumber Limited Partnership be read a first time and a second time and consider read a third time and finally pass. Any discussion on the motion or the bylaw? Okay, I don't see any. I just have one uh, comment. Just because the agreement ends in 2023, in September, I believe is what I was reading. Just there could be a change of council, change of staff and that sort of thing by that time. If we can have some sort of um, reminder or something put up in the spring of that year that this contract look be looked at. Yeah, we should really start talking about it uh... 90 days ahead and that's September, July, August, September. So that would probably cover that. So yes, we will um, endeavor to <laughs> be on the ball for that. Okay. <laughs> okay, right on. Thank you. And uh, I put that to the vote then if there's no further comments. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, so now we're moving on. We have 19 motion and notice the motions none at this time, announcements none. So 21, we're into our closed session area. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and John. Um. Okay, moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the next portion of the meeting at 8.29 p.m. be closed to the public in order to discuss a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, pursuant of Section 239.2C of the Municipal Act 2001. Those in favour? And that is carried. None opposed. Okay, so we'll meet back um, here after the closed session and um, Council, you have your closed session links that you can go to.